In this Maya hard surface modeling tutorial, I'll be showing you how to quickly and efficiently create cylindrical intersections like this. They're also modular in nature, and that way you'll be able to uh, intersect them or connect them with other cylindrical shapes. All that, plus some bonus tips in the video coming up. What's going on, you 3D modeling beasts? This is JL Musi, and today I'm coming back for 2021 with another Maya Hard Surface Modeling tutorial. The reason I'm creating this video is that cylindrical shapes and cylindrical intersections can be very tough to model, and I actually get a lot of questions regarding this topic. So I'm gonna give you a full breakdown on how to create these cylindrical pieces very cleanly, efficiently, and also modularly, so you could actually interconnect them together, almost like a pipe system. I have a lot of great things planned for this year, and one of them, if you've uh, seen some of the uh, posts that I have been putting up on social media with this fire hydrant, that is for a brand new Maya for beginners uh, 3D modeling series. So this is gonna be introduction to 3D modeling in Maya. It's gonna have a lot of good stuff in it. Uh, and it's basically gonna be uh, really dedicated towards beginners. So if you started 3D modeling recently and you're really struggling, this is gonna get you up to speed really, really quickly. I'm gonna have a lot more details coming out soon on that. Uh, the pricing on this is gonna be ridiculous as far as the affordability. I know 2020 was a uh, rough year for a lot of people, so I'm making this super affordable, like uh, cheese uh, pizza affordable. And I'm not even talking about like the good pizza like Papa John's. I'm talking about like Little Caesar, Hungry Howie's type of pizza. So it's gonna be super affordable, super accessible to um, a, a lot of you guys. And also make sure to check out the free trial that I'm currently having for my Maya hard surface modeling course. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and throw the link in the description down below. That way you actually get to access a, a free trial of the course for a whole seven days. So without further ado, let's get on with the video. Let's go ahead and begin with this L-shaped uh, corner piece right here. Couple things before I get started. Number one is I do primarily use shortcuts, keyboard shortcuts for all my Maya modeling tools. That helps me speed up my workflow. Also keeps the uh, length of these videos relatively short. Uh, however, I will place out a callout card with any menu commands that I don't verbally cover. That way, if you don't know where that tool is, you'll be able to find it uh, via the menu commands that I post in the callout card. Secondly is I will be primarily focusing on the intersections. However, uh, I will show you how to detail uh, some of these pieces, including the panel lines, uh, how to create pretty much these lips here. Also, how to get these nice sharp beveled edges along with applying thickness. However, I will uh, pretty much do it just on this piece, and that way uh, it's going to be the same exact workflow for all the other uh, interconnecting pieces. So I'll go ahead and begin. I'm going to go ahead and simply just hide this one, enable my grid, Create a cylinder, I'll lift this up, I'll hit D to enter edit pivot mode, V to snap right here on this pole, and then I'll hit W again to basically bake that uh, pivot change in. I'll hold down X, you see X will toggle the snap to grid option, so I can hold down X, and now this is nicely placed on my floor grid. I'll go ahead and jump to the side view here, and then uh, I'll basically just select these verts and drag this up. Now for this, I want to use the slice function within the modeling or the multi-cut tool. The multi-cut tool can be accessed via the modeling toolkit right here, right? By clicking this little hammer icon, you'll be able to access the modeling toolkit and also the multi-cut tool. Now uh, the slice function, uh, to get this to work, you basically just click outside of the object and you'll see that you place a point and now I'm placing another point. Now, the nice thing about these points here is that not only can you move uh, your camera uh, while pretty much letting you position this how you want, but you could actually snap these points to uh, this grid right here. So if we hold down X again, we can simply snap here, and then we can snap here. And now you see that this uh, larger square comprised 
of these four uh, grid tiles, right? If we snap here, snap here, this is going to be a 45 degree angle. So I'm going to hit enter to accept those changes. Now I can go ahead and jump to perspective and then I'm going to select this edge loop. I'll go ahead and detach this. Uh, basically detaching is going to separate uh, that uh, component. And now we have two different components, right? Or two different polygon islands. So now we can double click on a face and you see that these are no longer attached. Uh, we can go ahead and delete this. So now you see that we have a nice 45 degree cut. Uh, you could always select this and just hold on shift extrude. And here's the other side of this pipe uh, connecting here nicely. Now, uh, since I, I wanna go ahead and create a pretty symmetrical model, I'm gonna model all the detail here and then using symmetry, I'll go ahead and finish out the model here. So now that we have this, uh, what I'll go ahead and do is since we're working here, um, I'm gonna just hide the grid. I don't like the grid to be in the way sometimes. So I'll go to show grid, hide that. So f the first thing that I wanna do is block out a lip here that this is gonna have. I'll go ahead and access my uh, insert edge loop tool and I'll go ahead and drag something like this. This feels about right. So I'm gonna select this vert here. I'll do control three. What control three is gonna do is take that vert and convert it into a polygon selection, therefore making uh, selecting these cylindrical caps very, very quickly. Now I'm gonna go ahead and do my extrude command here and I'll go ahead and bring the offset down like this. One quick uh, tip here is that if you do control, you'll get more uh, guess control of the slider. And if you want more gradual control than that, you can do control and shift. And now you see that you have much more gradual control. So control and control and shift will give you a pretty much more uh, control when uh, scrubbing through these sliders uh, within the viewport. So now that I have a pretty much my inset here, uh, I'll go ahead and double click. So I'll select one of these faces, shift click, It'll select uh, that a loop, and then I can go ahead and extrude that out as well. Again, I'm doing Control and Shift just to get more gradual control. So that looks pretty good. I'll go ahead and take this edge, delete it. I'll take this vert, convert it again. Instead of extruding this time, I could just enable the Move tool with these faces selected, hold on Shift, and then just push down like so. And the cool thing about this is that uh, this, or holding down shift, really works with any transform. So if I went here and hold on shift and scale, you see that it's acting pretty much as an extrude. But I wanna fix value here. So sometimes I like to know numerically what that value is in case I have to do a command like this with a similar shape, uh, I get a good idea. And just doing with the scale tool, sometimes I don't have that. So I'll go ahead and actually do the extrude command and I'll bring this down to about 0.15. So I like where that is. I'll go ahead and get my move tool here. I'll hold on shift and I'll go ahead and extrude up. So this is how I like to model is kind of block in the detail before I start setting in bevels or anything like that. This is a pretty much what I like to do. Take it to the level that I wanted to and just kind of inspect my shape. Uh, now that everything uh, checks out, I wanna go ahead and proceed forward. So uh, the next thing that I'll do is actually start thinking about the thickness here for this. Uh, since we have a perfect 90 degree, or I'm sorry, a 45 degree cut, I'm actually gonna borrow this shape here and then scale it down to actually build out the thickness of this in the inside. So once we symmetrize this, and I'll have that thickness built into it. If we select these faces, is pretty much what I want, we can go to the edit mesh and then we can go to duplicate. Now by default, Maya does a pretty sloppy job in the outliner with this. You see that these two nodes are now buried in here. Obviously it is duplicated, but uh, I have to kind of drag them out, delete the history, and this is kind of a mess. So what I like to use a, a tool that works pretty much exactly the same, but gives me a lot cleaner result in the outliner is this uh, duplicate uh, button here. And this is a script part of Malcolm uh, 341's Mega Pack. I highly recommend uh, checking out his scripts. I will leave a link in the description down below. But long story short is uh, this tool, what it does is exactly what I did previously, but it just does it a lot cleaner within the outliner. And if you're using this tool over and over again, it could definitely pay, um, it could definitely save you a lot of time. So I'll go ahead and uh, go here to my custom shelf and then I'll do the duplicate and there you see. Now this shape is already in its own and I don't have to clean anything up. 
let me turn on my wireframe here. So what I want to do here is actually scale this uh, into place, right? The quickest way of doing this is for me to actually uh, enter edit pivot mode by hitting D. And then I'm going to hold down V and snap right here to this pole. Then I'll go ahead and jump to the side view here. I'm just going to nudge this down. And that's going to help me pretty much eyeball this and making sure that these are pretty much lined up with each other. Uh, one thing that I like to do though is leave a little bit of a gap and you'll see why in a second. So what I'll go ahead and do is shift click this other piece here and I'll run a combined command. From here, I'll select this vert, convert that to a face, we'll hit delete. And then the other thing that I wanna do before I do anything else is flip these normals here. Uh, you see that they need to be pointed outward. So I'll go to mesh display and we'll go to reverse. Now these normals are aligned properly. So from here, now that we have that gap, we could actually select both edges. It could be very hard if they're on top of each other to actually select them. So that's why sometimes I like to leave a little bit of room. And then if we just want to get them that much closer, we could always scale inward. So that's matching up nicely. And then now we can go ahead and run a merge command. It's going to merge that down for us. So this looks good. I'll go ahead and select this border edge here, and then I'll go ahead and nudge this up right about there, right where this meet, this angle meets up. Now that we have pretty much this block out completed, let's go ahead and add the final details uh, and holding edges. That way we can complete the piece. So the first thing that I'll do is add some bevels here. I like to select all the bevels or the edges that are going to have the same uh, type of bevel together. So. With these two edges selected, I'll run a bevel like this. And then from here, I can select both of these loops like this, and then do two edges, two edge perimeter. How you get this menu is once you have uh, all your faces that you wanna convert to uh, edge perimeters, you do control right click, two edges, two edge perimeter, and now we can run another bevel. And now you see that that's going to basically add those holding edges. And we're going to get that nice, crisp, uh, slanted edge once we go into sub D mode. I'll select this edge here. I'll do control B. And that's my shortcut for beveling. And then I'll add two divisions there. Now here we want to sell the illusion that these are two separate pieces. So what I'll go ahead and do, go to my insert edge loop tool, add a edge loop there. I'll go ahead and select this ring, and then I can go ahead and extrude up like so. I'll control right click, two edges, two edge perimeter, and then again, I'll run a bevel on that edge perimeter, and now we can leave some holding edges there. Let's go ahead and take care of these uh, edges here. So I'll double click these. Again, I'll do a small bevel, and then again, I'll select these rings, and, you know, alternatively, you, you can just select the uh, the edge loops as well. But, uh, you know, once you start having a lot of these, sometimes it could just be easier just to select the uh, face loops and then do a two edge, two edge perimeter conversion and just run that bevel again. So I'll go into three mode and I do like to assign uh, a blend to my um, sub D models. That way, if I have any pinching, uh, that will be exposed. But this is looking pretty clean. I do need a, a hard edge here, so I'll select this edge. I'll drop a bevel here. And for these, I could just double click the um, edge loops and just add another bevel that's gonna reinforce that shape. So I do wanna add another edge that's gonna help uh, pretty much help crease this corner once it's done. So I'll do control middle mouse click with the multi-cut tool enabled. Then you see that now we're getting this edge right in the middle of the shape. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna enable step snap. Uh, what that's gonna do is exactly like it sounds, it will uh, snap to certain steps. Uh, for this, it's gonna be 90 degrees. So uh, now with the rotate tool, I'm gonna be basically snapping to 90 degree increments as I rotate. So now that that's set, and you know, quick tip is you can toggle that option holding down J. But right now I just left it on here via this command. I'm gonna hold down shift and then also rotate, you see clone actually comes up, meaning that as I transform, I'm gonna be duplicating. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that one time. You see, I get my copy. Let's go ahead and turn on wireframe on shaded back on. And I'm also gonna go ahead and rotate this twice like this. I'll hit D, V. I'm gonna go ahead and vert snap here to this corner. 
hit W again to enable my move tool and then hold down V again and I'm going to snap right there, right? So now this is a clean shape, 45 degree cut. So the last order of business is to select both of these, combine them. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this vert here and I'm going to nudge it back. That way I have a little bit of separation. So I'm going to quickly select both of these loops, deselect these guys here, right? And what that's going to allow me to do is just run a merge. And then I can take this vert and run a target weld. And there we go. Right. So this is a clean shape. Uh, obviously, we're going to need some holding edges here because we're going to get a lot of bending. Uh, obviously, this could be the shape that you want. But in my case, I, I want a crease here. So I'll select this loop and then I'll bevel it and run two divisions and that should be it. So I'll go to three mode, take off the wireframe, and this is my result. So I'll go ahead and select uh, my meshes here. I'll do edit, delete by type, and history. That's going to basically get rid of all those history nodes. And then uh, this is going to be my left corner that I just completed, and we could delete that first one. Before moving on, what I will do is uh, one thing you'll notice is with these big spans here, uh, even though we have a holding edge, uh, we don't really have enough density. So what's going to happen in this um, holding edge is going to shoot up way into this mesh, right? So if we go into sub-D mode, you see how high that actually shoots up. And um, if we pay close attention here, we kind of have uh, just a little bit of an angle. So we want to add just a little bit more density. You see by just adding one uh, edge loop here in the middle with the multi-cut tool, you see how much uh, further this gets pushed down and that's going to help uh, crease this up quite a bit. So uh, since control middle mouse click is pretty much dropping this in the middle, I don't need to re-symmetrize uh, this. So I'll go ahead and repeat the process here as well. Uh, the other thing that I will do is since this is pretty much a modular setup, and I want pretty much all this to be precise from the thickness to these lips here, even uh, this little panel line. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and create kind of a, a modular asset. So I'm going to borrow this piece here and actually use it to create the rest of the uh, pipe connection. So uh, for that, um, I'll go ahead and use pretty much the same tool that I used before. So I'll go ahead and select all these uh, faces here, deselect this, right? and then I will use Malcolm's tool again. So this is gonna be the duplicate, and then uh, I'll just rename this. And as I model, um, I like to have these little backup pieces. If I'm, I'm gonna be reusing that asset over and over. I like to name them in the outliner and then just hide them. That way they're there when I need them. Next on the list is we're gonna create this uh, rounded corner. I'll give you a couple options on how to create this. Uh, number one is you could actually start with a polygon primitive and you could snag a torus. So we'll go ahead and rotate this. So I'll snap here. This is still snapping to a nine degree increment, which is pretty much what I want. We can go ahead and just kind of scale. And what we're looking to do here is pretty much place this. We have a lot of information here. So what I'm gonna do is just simplify this a little bit. So I'm gonna take both of these edges run a, a detach command. Now we can take that polygon all and delete this, edit the pivot. So uh, we'll edit the pivot here and snap it there. And then we'll go ahead and um, snap it again here, right? So now that these are snapped, uh, we can scale from here like so and get pretty precise. So that's pretty much one method of doing this and then you would obviously come in here and combine it. On that torus, you obviously have the ability to change this, but you know, this is lining up by default, it's 20. Uh, if you wanted more divisions along here, uh, you could obviously edit those as well. So that gives you a good example of, you know, one method of doing this. The other method is gonna be to actually uh, duplicate and rotate at the same time. So I'll go ahead and select this edge. This is pretty much the edge that I wanna duplicate from. I will, however, give myself a little bit more breathing room for this shape, so extrude up like so. And what I want to do is actually snap the pivot here uh, and give this a little bit of a offset. So I don't want to actually rotate from here. That's because everything's going to be uh, coming down on this corner. So I do want to go ahead and push this um, pivot and give it a little bit of a breathing room. Then I'll go ahead and enable my rotate tool. And now you see that we're rotating this edge. 
Now I'm going to make sure that this value is set to 15, and then uh, we're still using a relative step snap. Then from here, the key is going to be to hold down shift, rotate, and now we see that we essentially rotated and we duplicated this edge. So I'm going to go ahead and repeat this a couple more times. And we are rotating right there from that pivot. We get that perfect rotation, the perfect spacing there. And I'll just go ahead and fast forward the video here because this is the same exact workflow that I used on the previous connection. Now, one thing that I want to point out here is anytime that you get into curved surfaces, uh, scaling might not work. So what you can do to get this inside here is actually go to your move tool and do control middle mouse click. What that's going to allow you to do is a scale along the normal, but for bent items like this, a scaling could actually destroy your shape that you want. So in this case for the thickness, that's why I'm doing control middle mouse click with the move tool. And now you see that I'm scaling along the normal. So this looks complete. I'll go ahead and delete that original one. Take this, take my history, delete it, and then just rename this as well. Next on the list is this uh, T intersection here uh, with the uh, smaller radius uh, pipe coming out of it. So we'll go ahead and begin. So I'll go ahead and create another cylinder, drag it up, jump over to the side view, and I'll go ahead and just scale this up just a little bit next i'll enable the multi-cut tool do control middle mouse click essentially what i'm trying to do here is as you see the the finished one right uh, we want to go ahead and place uh, this smaller connection right in the middle and that's why i'm doing control middle mouse click when i'm creating uh, these intersections uh, i like to basically get a crosshair a bullseye in this vertex right in the middle this is going to act as that bullseye. So what I want to do is add two more loops. I'll go ahead and do control middle mouse click. That's going to give me that even spacing. I just take both of these and scale and I want to make sure that I'm on world. Uh, what you can do is do control and shift and right click. And that way we're going to get the uh, right here, the orientation setting. So we want to make sure this is set to world and now we can go ahead and scale this up. So from this point, I want to go ahead and select the faces that this uh, other pipe is going to encompass right what i'm basically trying to do here is kind of section this off and give this a initial uh extrusion inward like an inset and then what i can do is actually do a circularized component and that's going to give us that clean round cutout and there's a nifty little option there that's going to allow us to align it on this curved surface so i'll go ahead and select this uh face here this face here this face here and this face here. I'm just going to double check it and just make sure that I am pretty much here evenly where I want, which that looks pretty good. So uh, you don't know how many times uh, you think you're dead on with a selection only to find out that you're skewed one way or the other. So from this point, we'll go ahead and do this initial extrusion and we'll give ourselves a little bit of offset, right? And now we are rerouting this uh, and now we're getting kind of this rerouting pattern. Uh, anytime that you're modeling and you have this uh, pole, this five star here and this junction, this is a reroute pattern, right? You see that now if I come in here and double click, now we have a loop going this way. So this is kind of what we want when we're hard surface modeling. We're trying to visually isolate these pockets of detail. We'll go ahead and select these faces here. I'll do shift right click and I'll do circularize components. Now, one thing about these shift and right click commands is that they are uh, context sensitive or selection sensitive, meaning that depending on the components that you have, uh, you will get a different set of options. So for example, if I select this vert, I'll do shift and right click. You see that same exact command 
yet we have a different set of uh, commands. I'll just go back to my face selection here. So I'll do shift, right click, circularize components, and I'm gonna play with the alignment. Uh, you see that if we do surface um, per vertex, we get a wonky result. So the one that you wanna be doing on curved surfaces is surface average. Now we get a perfect uh, round uh, circle here is what we want. And then uh, we're gonna go ahead and play uh, with the radial offset to bring that in. Now just take this selection, extrude outward, and then scale flat. So from this point, we pretty much have the uh, routing that we want. Uh, one thing that I will do is I'll go in here, double click this, and I'll add a bevel with two divisions. So I'm just quickly adding some holding edges here. I'll go to three mode and you see this holds up pretty well. And if I slap a blend on this, we shouldn't really get any pinching. So again, um, what I'll go ahead and do is repeat the same process. I'm just gonna fast forward this and I'm gonna go ahead and just slap on my detail pieces, how we've been doing. And then uh, again, uh, I'll go ahead and uh, slap this uh, smaller a detail piece and I'll just scale it down. So essentially we're gonna get that finalized piece repeating the same process that we've been doing. Now I want to point out on this inside piece that I'm building, I did go ahead and just uh, basically duplicate this piece. Uh, if we try to push and pull uh, along the normal, uh, sometimes depending on the shape, uh, you can get some wackiness here. So uh, instead of doing that, what I'm actually opting to do is I'm just going to move this here to the center of this uh, shape and then just scale this down slightly like this, right? And then uh, what I'm doing is pretty much using this uh, inner shape here just to gauge that. One thing I'm noticing here is uh, we uh, sometimes when we merge shapes, they don't have the same material. So I'll go ahead and give this a blend and this should look pretty good. So this is the last piece that we'll be working on. Uh, two main differences here is one uh, that uh, this and this intersection are actually the same radius. And two and more importantly, this is on the angle. So the circularized components uh, strategy that we did previously probably wouldn't work with this because of the angle. Uh, so we're actually going to use a booleans and clean. This is a method that I use quite a bit is where we're actually going to take a boolean shape, combine it, and then clean it up to leave uh, a clean result like this. So again, we'll go ahead and get a cylinder, drag this up, I'm going to go ahead and scale it something like this. And then uh, from this point, uh, what I'll do is uh, similar as before with the multi cut, I want to start planning that intersection. So I'll go ahead and drop a loop right in the middle. So for this one, I want to be a little bit more uh, tactical in the way that I build this because this doesn't have a perfect line of symmetry here. The previous one did have pretty much that perfect line of symmetry. This one we don't because of that unique angle, right? So I wanna do a little bit more thought behind it just to get a clean result and minimize our time modeling. So what I'll go ahead and do is select these guys here and also bring in this uh, connection backup. I'll do shift I just to bring it in the mix is attach it early on. So I'll select this vertex, delete it. And I'll leave one more copy here sitting there. 
So I'll go ahead and move the pivot here. And then again, I'll just vert snap, take this, combine. And then uh, we can go ahead and merge this bad boy down. So I'll select all these verts, do a merge low threshold. Also assign a blend. And there we go. We'll go ahead and delete this cap here as well. Now, what I'll do is uh, with uh, this selected, I'll hold on shift and just get my clone. Now it's just a matter of just getting the angle that I want. Uh, seeing that this is uh, set to on, we could just turn this off and then we could just eyeball this angle. So I want to make sure these guys are isolated in the side view here. So I'll select them in perspective, do shift I, and there we go. Essentially what I'm trying to do here is just match that angle that I had. And make sure this is matching up exactly how I want it. I'll actually go ahead and mirror this side just to get this uh, final part. So again, I'll go ahead and jump to the side. This is going to be pretty much that symmetry line. I'll do shift right click. We'll go ahead and do mirror. And then again, cut geometry on the Y. We'll do mirror. And if your mesh disappears, it's just a matter of flipping the direction. And there we go. All right. So we have this. Uh, this is matching up pretty much to kind of that original reference that I had. Now it's time to connect this. Uh, we are going to be using booleans. Uh, the thing about booleans is that it does require a watertight mesh. So you don't want to overload Maya in the booleans and have it thinking too hard and confusing it. And um, all these open uh, areas will confuse the booleans operation. So let me go ahead and help it out a little bit. I'm going to orient this to this edge here. So I'm going to push this all the way in like this, and then I'll go ahead and do an extrude and then merge collapse, merge to center. So that's going to be nice and watertight right there. And then uh, what I can do here is come in and then push this through again. We still have our pivot aligned. So I'll push this down and I can do an extrusion and then a merge collapse, merge to center. And these two, I'll go ahead and just extrude once and do merge to center. I do want to readjust this. So I'll go ahead and move this down. So this is pretty much in the uh, center, right? I have enough uh, breathing room on both sides. So this is a little bit more centered. And then I'll simply uh, move this uh, line or this edge down here, right? And this edge is going to be pretty important because uh, we're actually going to need it here as well to keep everything nice and quiet. So everything lines up. Everything is nice and watertight. So I'll select both meshes, shift right click, and then I'll go to booleans and then we'll do a union. And there we go. Right. So you see that we did a little bit of planning and we don't have that much cleanup to do. Select all these pieces here or sorry, all these verts. And we'll run a merge command. And most of these should be merged together. For verts that are a little bit more far apart, what I like to do is make sure all my verts are deselected. I'll go back to vert mode. And then uh, I like to do a target weld. And you see that I have more control. Essentially that I don't want to affect this vert here. Or I wouldn't want to, for example, weld this guy here to this. Because now I'm slightly affecting this edge right this uh perpendicular edge so i'd rather go ahead and actually do it this way so now what i'm going to do is uh select these edges here do a slight bevel with two divisions you see this bevel here it's actually pushing this edge back so what i'm actually going to do is really don't want that so i'll go in here and select this and kind of straighten it back out uh, one thing you'll also notice is these hanging inverts here so what I can do is scoop these up. Anytime that you're booling uh, two shapes together, you're bound to get some hanging verts. So uh, what we can do is just select that shape here, and then we can hit delete, and we should get a clean cylinder. And then uh, lastly, uh, I'll go ahead and just peel this off like I've usually been doing, scale it in, and then that's going to give us that interior shape to make this uh, thickness complete on the inside. So again, I'll go ahead and select uh, this uh, part right here and I'll duplicate it, scale it in 
and that will complete the inside thickness. So here's my finished piece. I'll hide this back up and then we'll go ahead and take off the wireframe. Make sure this has a blend. And here's the final intersection. Thank you so much for watching this Maya Hard Surface Modeling tutorial. Make sure to drop a like in the video if you enjoy the content. That tells me that you guys want to see more of this type of content. Also drop a comment down below with your thoughts or any questions that you might have about the video. Until we meet again folks, I will catch you next time.